check out that sweet sky. This video, we're doing some glazing. What's up guys, I'm John the Potter and welcome back to another pottery video. Today we are talking about glazing. People have asked me to do glazing tutorials so I'm gonna go through how I like to glaze things and keep in mind there are tons of different ways you can glaze, tons of different temperatures. I go kind of uh, medium to high fire cone six. Uh, a lot of elementary schools do low fire glazes. A lot of other potters go really high fire like cone 10. The hotter you go the more durable and the more depth you can get in the glaze but I find that cone six works great for me. Uh, that's the way I learned in college was with cone six glazes and so that's what I use now and I get great results with my glazes. So when I glaze I tend to like to load two to three layers on the top of all the pots and let it drip down. And so everyone has their own style, so I'm gonna go through how I do some of my glazing. So we'll see you in the studio. Here we are, we are in the studio, ready to be glazing. Wait, you're not supposed to be in the studio. You're supposed to be at Auntie's house. Let's fix that. We're teaching Ryder how to apparate, how to teleport from place to place, so it's going pretty good. That was about 20 miles, so let's do some glazing. So the first thing that I do when I glaze is I wax the bottom and then I wax any other part that I don't want there to be glaze on. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna wax the bottoms because that makes sure that the glaze won't adhere to the clay. It makes it super easy for cleanup and because you don't want any glaze touching the kiln shelves. Not good for the pot, not good for the kiln shelves. So for these mugs, we want to wax that Minnesota because we don't want any glaze on there. And then we just want to wax the bottom too. So I just take my wax, paint it on, and then I take just the part that I trimmed, which is just like this, and I just wipe the wax on there. If I didn't wax that part, then the glaze would have a tendency to just run all the way to the bottom or run off really easily. So having a little bit of wax across the bottom side really helps. And then we wax the Minnesota and then we'll just let this dry. And the wax, once it's on, is you can't just wipe it off, you actually have to sand it off so if you make mistakes. So it is important to try your best to not get any wax anywhere that you don't want. Just saves time in the end. All right, so we're just gonna wax all this stuff and then we'll start glazing. The only other thing that you might have to do before you wax is if you have any glaze that you want applied to the pot before the wax goes on, then you have to put that in first. Mix up this black glaze. You take a little bit of black glaze with this, our sponge, put that in like that, and then we clean off our sponge. So I just dipped it in water, cleaned it off, and then we wipe off that excess so that where we stamped it, it keeps that clay in there. And then when that's dry, we take our wax and we wax that. So then now when we dip this in the, in the glaze, the glaze won't adhere to the Minnesota, but we'll still have that black glaze in there. And then it stands out a lot more when it's finished, like that. We got everything waxed and we're getting ready to start glazing. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my glazes. I fire everything to cone six. I tend to use lots of greens and blues and blacks. I switch it up a lot. Most of my glazes are all commercial glazes that I get from either Continental Clay in Minneapolis or Minnesota Clay, also in Plymouth, Minnesota. I find for the convenience factor and the reliability and consistency, I just can buy them there. I, the reason I don't use like big, uh, bigger commercial glazes is like Amico is because the ones that are made at my local store are actually quite a bit cheaper and so I can just go pick those up and I've learned a lot of combinations that I really like with just those ones. So try out your local pottery store, see what they have because those Amico glazes like Blue or Teal and those ones I used in college, those can get pretty spendy if you buy them like it's two to three hundred bucks for like a giant thing where some of these are only like 80 bucks for the same amount. I'll show you my glazes. So the ones I use a lot are the black which is right here uh, this one is a green one, and this is a buttercream glaze, and this is a floating blue. I probably use these four for 75% of my glazing, and then I have a few other ones that I like to use too, like this matte white and an Albany brown. But I'm just gonna go through and do some of the glazes that I do like really consistently. So what I typically like to do is I dip everything for the most part, and what I like to do is I like to load the glaze up on the top like third 
So I usually will have three, two to three glazes on the top and then one glaze on the bottom. So I'll take like, so say I'm doing a black, green, and buttercream glaze, and I would dip the whole thing in black, and then I would just do, and then I'd let that dry, dip the next color into green, like to here, and then dip another buttercream like to the same as the green. And I like that a lot because it creates a lot of depth up on the top of the rim and it kind of starts to drip. But since you only have one glaze at the bottom of the mug, then it won't drip totally off. Then the dripping kind of stops somewhere in between there and there. So. clear-cut tutorial about glazing because there's so many different ways to glaze and some people paint it on some people dip it like I dip it some people go to cone 6 some people go to cone 10 some people go to cone, cone 04 so you really just have to kind of experiment what so what I like to do is just have lots of drips and I like to dip everything for the ease of it and the consistency across the board so we got our two glazes on the top here, so it's on blue on the bottom. Now we're just gonna add that third glaze around the top because it's close to dry. So we mix up that buttercream. And then we put that last glaze around the top. And then we'll just let that dry and that will be done. Same thing with this one. So we got the black on the whole thing and then the green around the top. And then we're gonna add one more glaze around the top. Just like that, and then that'll be good to go. So we'll wipe off, make sure we wipe off the bottom so that that glaze doesn't stick to the bottom of the kiln shell. Wipe that off with a clean sponge, just like that. And then we're ready to load. When I'm thinking about glazing things like bowls, where the inside shows a lot and it can't drip off, I really like to load glaze on in the middle because obviously it has nowhere to drip so it's just gonna be on the inside. So then, like right now we have a black glaze that's in the middle and then a little bit of green around the edge. And then I'll take another one and I'll coat the whole inside with glaze. So I'm just pouring that glaze all inside and then I'll roll the glaze around and then pour the excess out. And then this one, since it'll fit in here, I'll actually just take it and dip the top edge around a little bit so that it does get a little bit on the end, but that it won't be enough to totally drip off the side. Just like that. As I get pieces done, then I'll start to kind of load the kiln. So this piece is all done. It's got a black glaze around the top, and then a green on the whole thing, and then the buttercream around the rim, which is kind of my pattern, is just having three across the top. And so now we'll load this into the kiln, and we'll just start and slowly loading until we get to the, till we get it full. Okay, so I've realized while I'm filming this why I haven't done a glazing tutorial yet, because it's like so complicated and there's so much to it, and so I think that I'll do this video. These are just kind of some glazing tips and thoughts and how I think about it. Uh, but then in a future video, I'll like dive deeper into like, this is why I do this one glaze or like, this is what to think about like loading the kiln. But this video is good. Like I kind of think about glazing this way. You know, I like to have drips and I like to have lots of glaze colors and blues and greens and, but you might like other things. And so this is just kind of how I do it. You know, if you wanna glazing tips from John the Potter. Number one, wax the bottom. Make sure there's no glaze that's touching 
the kiln shelves. Number two, load the glazes on top. Two to three layers on the top and leave only one layer on the bottom two thirds so that the glaze has room to drip. Number three, keep experimenting. Just try something new every time and eventually you'll get something you love. Three tips from John the Potter about glazing. I just came up with those right now. So I hope they're good. Always make sure your bottoms are clean. It's just a good life motto. Clean, all clean. All full. We got this kiln all full. It's all ready to go. You saw me glaze some mugs. There's a few bowls in there, some vases. Everything's kind of under the same philosophy where we have the three glazes on top, just different combinations of those things. Now I do a lot of different stuff, but that's kind of just what I wanted to stick with for the first one. So to program the kiln, what I do is I fire it to cone six, stop whatever it was doing, cone fire. Now it's asking me if I want to preheat it. I'll just say enter because I don't want to preheat it. Cone six, enter. Then I'll do it on medium speed. And then it's going to ask me if I want to hold it at all, which I don't hold it at all. I do a zero hold. So I'll say enter at zero. Now I'll press start. And now it's on. And then the last thing that we do is we start the vent. So that's what this big giant box is that you always see. So this is just a fan that will vent it. So I open that thing, turn that fan on, so then it just sucks all the fumes out. It's also super annoying when it's running and it's loud, but that's okay. Then we'll close it. Now we're going to hit the lake. Thanks for watching this video, how to glaze. I know this video is kinda all over the place a little bit, so I'm definitely gonna do more glazing tutorials in the future, but I thought this gave a, a good start. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Like this video if you haven't liked it already. We'll see you in the next video.